Why you don't never look at the camera when you're talking? Because hmm? I'm never... talking to you. I understand, but you can wait. You want me to look at the camera? Okay, I will look at the camera this entire episode. No, don't do that. Don't, don't do that. Don't, don't just do that. look at the camera like this. <laughs> What's up, everybody, and welcome to another episode of Let's Talk About It. <laughs> what? You look crazy. No, I don't. Welcome to, can, I, can I do the intro, please? Don't do that. Welcome start to over. another episode start over. of Let's Talk About It. I got to start over now? Why are you? Okay, never mind. What? I'm, I'm looking everywhere, man. I okay. got ADHD. It's a vacuum over there. It is. I have carpet. That, okay. All right. Anyway. What's up, everybody? <laughs> what? <laughs> it's on a beat, make it boom. <laughs> What's up, everybody? And welcome to another episode of Let's Doc About It. Uh, as always, I'm Alan Ford. I'm Will Hill. And today's documentary is about uh, the rise and fall of N1 basketball, which... Everybody remembers N1. If you didn't, you lived under a rock. Seriously. This yes. is another Untold in the Netflix series. Untold, yes, yes, um, yes. About sports docs. Yes, we um, figure we switch it up. We've been talking about a lot of crime stuff lately. Yeah, no, we'll get back. Well, we'll get back to the crime we, stuff. We're going to watch all the docs. All any, the docs. Any docs that y'all watch, y'all want us to talk about, yeah. please put it down in Let the comments. Know. Let us know in the comments. But yeah, this N1 was a, it was a good one. Mm-hmm. It was... It was nostalgic. Nostalgia? Yes. Nostalgic. And it was nostalgic. predictable. <laughs> it was very predictable. Yeah, no, I liked it. Um, it, it kept my attention. I was watching. Um, yeah, it was very New York. At some time, it was very New York. Yeah. Um, New York. I mean, because Rucker Park is just known for street ball. You Rucker know what I'm saying? Park. New York is known for street ball. 100%. That's where almost the hoopers come from. You go to New York to play basketball. Yeah, 100%. I get, I, I get New York that. That and Tim's. Yes. For those who don't know, N1 started three white guys. That's who started N1. It started out as a t shirt company. Yeah, they were making, yes. like, uh, because these, these three white guys love the ball. They like they to play basketball. Ball. So they made trash talking t shirts with the N1. They made through the logo and all Which I stuff. thought, low key, the faceless people for their t shirts right. is genius. It is. Because. It could be anybody. You know what I'm saying? A lot of times you miss people. Some people can miss the mark on certain things because certain representation is not being interpreted in their clothes when it comes to people and faces on clothing. Right. Having the person be faceless means you're not, you know what I'm saying? You're not propelling a person forward. It's like, bro, that could be you saying these words. I thought the shit was genius. That, that was cool. And then they, uh, I think they came up. They came across like some. I think a, like a basketball mid, not a mid-state, Like what was? I forget what they came across. Of, but how they started to get into like the actual street ball thing. Because Ray for Austin, mm-hmm. aka Skip to my Lou, was the first one they like show, put on the team. Put yeah. On a, oh, put on like a, a show. Yeah, he they figured he on, was not going. He was on the first mid state. Like, yeah, and then they started to recruit more, more players like main event. The main event got his homie Shane the Dribble Machine, then all these other players. Ayo, yeah, Ayo. So they started out with fifteen players. Yeah. Then eventually they had fifty players. Hold on, let's let's keep on the rise of Ayo. On the rise of it. So okay, so they started with the T-shirt, and then uh, they tried to make a shoe. Yeah. At first, and they gave it to Stefan Marbury. That clunky ass thing. And soon, <laughs> soon Stephon Marbury wore the shoe, broke his foot. So they stopped with the shoe for a minute. Then they like to say, let's you know, let's go to the street ball. Then the first mitts tape was Ray for Austin. Let's get to and my then room. they would just hand the mitts tape out for free. It was it was, it was, it was music on there too. Yeah, it was. They would put like uh, unreleased music, unreleased music, unreleased artists. So it was it was a mixtape in the sense of like a rapper put down a mixtape, and basically the visuals was skip to my loop. Skip to my loop, just him playing pickup street basketball, and it was different. Yeah, and it was there, so they would get more. Handing them out for free, and they are and they're like packing these parks. These parks look like Woodstock, the safe <laughs> version of Woodstock. That's what these parks look like, and they just these parks are packed. Like it's hard to get into these. Parks. Yeah, these parks are packed, and so uh, they wanted a face of the brand, pretty much. Have and to. that's when they came across hot sauce. Well, uh, hot sauce was the face of it, right? Well. Skip to my Lou was first. Yeah, he started off, but he wasn't no money bringer like Hot Sauce was. Yeah, but they didn't get to Hot Sauce to fucking volume three. 
Yeah, and they had two volumes of just the regular people we say, like uh, Ray Frost and Main Event, Shane the Drill Machine, Half Man, Half Amazing. It's a bunch. Like, yeah, this was this was just New Jersey. This oh, was... and they had Escalade. Escalade, who was Mark Jackson's brother. R.I.P. 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 Escalade. Um, no, so they started in New Jersey. That's yeah. what they did. All of Volume One, all of Volume Two. Then they decided to go on tour, pretty much the Eastern Seaboard, and then they got all the way down to um, Atlanta. That's what House House was. Yes, because he can He said he got out of jail. That same just got day, out of jail the, the same, same day, day. <laughs> went there and started hooping on people, and then they signed them to the tour. Yeah, Hot Sauce was most definitely on a different level than everybody. Everybody else remember Hot Sauce. He still lost to Anthony Mackie in a basketball game on a crossover. Yeah, he was in a movie. Yeah, I seen it. They, they showed they, they showed a part of it. Yeah, that movie was still bad. But he lost <laughs> to Anthony Mackie. But dude, let's let's talk about how great Hot Sauce was real quick. Everybody did because like that dude brung. What we now know, I feel like people now know is and one. You know what I'm saying? Right. That's he put it on the map, put it on the shoulders, yes. and propelled it to where it was going to be. I don't think without him they could have done it. No, they could not. Because without him and the announcer, the announcer is the goat of that shit. Oh baby, hot saucy, and then a the slow motion dribble. If you see that slow motion dribble, Kyrie does the Kyrie. Yeah, that, that does slow that motion has he? A lot. Yeah, what? Oh my God. Kyrie does it a lot. Just between the legs, the like all that. Kyrie Irving dribbles like that. A lot of them NBA players dribble like that. Now they do, yeah. I mean, but they grew up watching A and one and shit. So like they was able to bring it to NBA, you know, to the NBA level and right. make it effective. You know, the one move you can't do now because the shirts actually fit. You can't like twist it and put it in your shirt because that shit gonna be tough now. But them clothes just be big Whoa, as hell. Big he as used hell. to hoop and all the big clothes. <laughs> I think it was one game. Hot sauce like he the shirt was so big he would, like cut like trim his sleeves. Yeah, would, like uh, put the cut them up. Yeah, yeah, cut the fur up and then just hooping that. It's like what the hell is this? And he would hoop in a do rag the whole time. Whole time in a headband, do rag yeah. in a headband. Yes, he said he couldn't keep a job, so his nine to five was dribbling. And I was like, oh, that's dedication. That's the, that a fucking case. He got paid for that. Bro. I mean, I feel like it's to me the the whole old adjective of finding something you love to do, then finding a way to get paid for it. Hot sauce, hot sauce, <laughs> hot sauce. He did. He found it. He found a way to fresh out of jail. I'm gonna go get this check. And he got signed just like that. That, that shit was Global crazy. Global phenomenon, man. And they didn't even have the shoes there. So, okay, let's fast forward. They uh, get a deal. I think they got the deal from ESPN to do, like, the show, the competition show. Bro, they had them sleep in a shitty-ass hotel. Yeah, but that's that's pretty much when you started off. There's not really that much money in it. Yeah. And people are coming to and these games And they didn't fucking free. complain. No. That's- well, making shit. Nothing. <laughs> they was just hooping, but they were getting glad, taken care of. A yeah, bit somewhat. They're glad to be hooping. That's it. That's crazy. It. But then, like, you fast forward to they making a little bit of change. Yeah, they them. made some noise. Made some noise. And then they do the competition show on ESPN. Mm-hmm. And first place they go is Portland, Oregon. Yep. And that's when they introduce. The street ball, like everybody knows today. Because he still Professor. produced videos and stuff. Yeah, so, he, yeah. he still, he still makes the YouTube videos. He uh-huh. does the dribbling for NBA 2K. Um, He's been doing the dribbling for NBA 2K for years. You know what I wish they would have went into? What? The the picking of the nicknames. I know they say the announcer gave them the names. I think he right? only did two names, though. He only did two names. He did Professor and then he did Hot Sauce. So I saw his the man's real name is Philip Champion. I understand. He, he I thought it was. I thought he was already hot sauce. No, he gave him the name hot sauce. They didn't say that. They didn't. No, I thought they gave him the name hot sauce. I know he gave him the name the professor. I know, said, it, "My God, son, the professor." Yeah, no, but yeah. in the doc they said that. I mean, it was kind of mixed up a little bit, right? Right. Because the nicknames you kind of you didn't give him yourself. You had to earn them first off. You know, you just don't get a nickname. You have right. to earn it. And once you earned it, the the DJ, not the DJ, the the what do you call it, the announcer, host, or MC, MC there you go. the MC gave out the nickname. So I'm like, what went into picking the nickname? You know what I'm saying? I I would have liked to have seen that. But I feel like some of them you get your nickname just on the court, like I, on the court I, prior. Before I get that. it, but I would have liked to learn uh, how to have learned right. How did you, how did you get that? How where did AO come from? Right? Where His did name have, is Aaron Owens. I, I get it. <laughs> I get it. He had the most disrespectful move, by the way. Which one? 
off the oh, head. That's <laughs> him. He started that stuff. And then he will do it and then swipe your headband down. If you wore a headband, yep. he would do that shit. That was, that's disrespectful. Um, and one was very disrespectful in basketball or something. Yeah, it's, it's, it's like rap battling. Oh, yeah. You got to be disrespectful. You got to be Doc on that. You got to find that one. Oh, you all are all fucking Doc? Oh. <laughs> oh. If it is one, I watch it. But, but yeah, AO was the, okay, like okay. main event. Main shoot, event. Shoot. Half the man, half amazing. At what point did you go? That dude's different. You know what I'm saying? Right. That's what I would have wanted to know. Like, because throughout the whole entire dot, they didn't even get into everybody seriously. And it's like, y'all could have gotten to, like, the top eight. You know what I'm saying? And dove a little bit deeper into how they gained their prominence. Right. You know what I'm saying? Because the whole story of and one simple. <laughs> Very simple. There was no loops, no turns, nothing. It was, like, it was simple. Oh, okay, that just went, that just, it went this the whole time. Yeah. It never went up. It just it never went up or down. It just kept steady. Yeah, it was steady the time. whole entire time. So, like, I felt like it was a missed opportunity. You could have got more into the players. You know what I'm saying? Make me love these players more. You know what I'm saying? Right. You got opportunity. You got these guys sitting there for these interviews. Get into their, their rise, their prominence. You know what I'm saying? Let me... Let me get in there, you know. But maybe it's, it's out there already, and I haven't seen it. <laughs> I don't. But it's probably on the thirty. ESPN got a thirty for thirty for it. That's what I'm saying. So it's it so might it's it probably already said. So they decided to stick with just the company and one. Right. Anyway. But I know Ray Frost. I think he got his just on the street. Skip to my Louis. Yeah. Got yeah. His. No. Again, I, the the top prominent guys they already had anything. They did. You know. They you, did. They were not just a, a person trying to make the tour. These are people you had to go get. You know what I'm saying? Right, so, or it got referred to, just like comedy. Yeah. But you got referred to it, something like that. Something mm-hmm. like that. But then, like, okay, so we do the competition show. Professor, what the competition was, because uh, it was on ESPN. ESPN. Uh, they will pick the people. They would have, like, three people. And then every city they go to, if you play, if you suck, you get kicked off. Back the home. Back home you go. <laughs> Professor lasted the whole from the day. First, from the first man. to the end. He lasted the whole thing and ended up winning. Mm-hmm. And then they also had like Spider on there. If you don't know Spider, you ever seen the one call away music yep. video with Chingy? The dude <laughs> hang on the hey, real quick. Yeah, that's Spider. <laughs> he ended up making the tour anyway. Then they had Sick With It on the tear, tour. Mm-hmm. But they didn't win, but they ended up still being on the tour. Yeah. Anyway, so that was dope. But then they were like, that's when it really blew up. Because they were the number one show on ESPN. Well, yeah, beat out Sports Center. Between 18 and 49. <sighs> Crazy. Beat out. Yeah, because Sports Center run all damn day. Same da, da, episode. Da, da, da. Same <laughs> episode it's all sports news. day. It's That's... like, man, does Stuart Scott go home? <laughs> R.I.P. Stuart Scott. R.I.P. Stuart Scott. Well, yeah, that was. that They were they were making money, man. Then the shoes came. They went on that world tour, which did you have, was. Did you have a pair of one shoes? I'm pretty sure I did. You had, you probably don't remember. Nah. I feel like I did. Mine's a blue, like one side was blue and the other side was white. White, okay. And the N1 character would be like right on the heel. You know what I didn't know? Like what really went into their shoemaker that they had that one dude, you know what I'm saying, pretty much designing all the shoes. I, I didn't know that. I really only thought N1 was a sports type brand. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. I didn't know it was actual clothing line. I thought the stuff came from the street ball, not the other way around. No, that's that's. That's what got you for a loop. I did too. Yeah, it's like, oh shit, this shit started out as a T-shirt. Yeah, they they wanted to be in clothes and, and shit. Clothes. Like, <laughs> and they were they were actually second to Nike. Yeah, for a minute, like they just giant. they didn't even bring up Adidas or anything. They were second to Nike. That's uh, what they hot sauce people. man is just saying. Yeah, hot sauce saying. We're gonna go to Reebok. Wait, yeah. bitch, go ahead. Yeah, Reebok <laughs> going. He go to Reebok. Don't give a shit. Reebok gonna ruin them. Right. That's what he said Reebok gonna ruin them. Like, crazy, like, crazy. Like, I didn't even realize that Vince Carter had on and one shoes during that dunk contest. In the 2000 dunk contest? Yeah. I thought he still had on Nikes. I didn't know that either. They, they showed it in the dot. Okay, I got to peep that again. I didn't know that. I thought he was wearing Nikes the whole time because he was wearing Nike. Nope, he was wearing the second pair that that dude had created. Oh. Yeah, he was wearing and ones when, and he, when he did the honey dip. And that pro- oh, yeah, that took off. And that was, they were hot because that was a 2000 they dunk contest. They did it for contest. free. Oh, yeah. They didn't. They didn't pay him to do it. He just did it. Just did That's it. how hot he had. A, he was signed with Nike at the time. That is how hot. Oh shit! They, are. they were up there, man. From nineteen ninety nine to two thousand, probably five. It was hot. They were hot. That was real nice. Crazy. That's that's crazy how things just go to the end. But you know, money issues. Crazy. But then crazy. we 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 go to that. We get to the tour. Then they go overseas. They give them a world tour. 
and they still up there to beat Nike. The the one guy who was making the shoes, well, they had to switch people who were making the shoes at first because the first guy, his shoe was so shitty, he didn't want no he advice. <laughs> so he just gave it to the other guy. Like he, he said, well, did film. you do it? Yeah, he, he just took off. Took off. <laughs> they said he was in his office for three days. Come out with five. They, they put him up there with um the Jordan brand, Greg Tinker, Tinker Hatfield, whatever his name is. Oh, yeah, I know you're talking about. Yeah, they, they they put him up there with, with him. I'm and like, old boy didn't want no notarization, no publicity or nothing. He just wanted to make the shoe. Yep. And I'm like, okay, when well, you dedicate to yourself something like that, and you make the shoe, it's good. And I think they moved to what they moved to Taiwan or something like he that. He moved to Taiwan so he uh, can have more creative control, control. over the uh, material and, and stuff. And then he didn't like it because he had. Not, not even that. It's just I think he was already running himself ragged. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Trying to get out the best product. And then you got somebody on your back. What's next? What's next? What's yeah. next? Yeah, What's next? Oh, can we sell what I just yeah. did? <laughs> yeah, like we do this first. Let's retro the first. <laughs> That's like doing a special. What's your next special? Well, can I marinate in this first, please? God. This just came out. Let me let Jesus. bask in the glory. glory. God damn. Crazy. God damn. But then, so he left the company. Quit. I think his name was like Matt, right? Matt or something like that. I don't want to get it wrong. Okay, I mean it. Well, the guy left the company and then started to plummet. Immediately. 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 90 degrees. (laughs) (laughs) And went downhill fast. (laughs) And then, uh, I'm I'm going to jump to something because this also caught my eye. Remember the the Nike commercial? Yeah. The the beat? Mm -hmm. The guy said it took them two minutes to do what we did in about seven years. Yep. With 20 with a budget. He probably guessed the budget. He said like $20 million. Yeah, I don't think probably. the budget was probably. No, nah, they budgets be half of the fucking commercials. Really? For yes. The, uh, but I mean, because you're getting the best cameras, the best editors. You're not getting the best athletes. I think you they had Jay Williams. They had Jason Williams. They had Vince Carter was in it. Uh, Lamar Odom was in that commercial. Pay attention. I have to rewatch it, it now. A, it was some other, it was just some random people, but that. Probably one of the greatest Nike commercials of all time. Like the, yeah, the most recognizable. Most recognized. You remember For the most sure. parody one? It was a scary movie, too. Yes. Fucking hilarious. <laughs> when it got in scary movie, too, I was like, hilarious. this commercial just took it off hilarious. completely. <laughs> but again, but you you got to pay all the creative minds to do that. You know, I mean, but they didn't have 20 mil to spend on all the fucking commercials. So and like, as a kid, if you didn't reenact that commercial, I feel like I, if you play basketball as a kid, you react that, reenact that commercial. And then like, not, not even that. Like, the then most of the budget went to commercial slots. You had to spend all that money to get it everywhere. Right. You know what I'm saying? Yes. So, like, that's where most of the money probably fucking went. TV slots. So, of course, and, like, that, that's the thing when you go against any giant in any, uh, any area. You know what I'm saying? Whoever's on top has the most money. A lot of time, that money is power. With that money being power, they can outshine you on something little. You know what I'm saying? Like you said, it took them seven years to get where it was. Where it was. And they did it in 30 seconds in that fucking commercial. Man. Put it everywhere because N1 didn't have the finances to put N1 commercials on every major channel. But you they, know what I'm saying? They had good marketing strategies. Like, the way they got their tapes out. Now, now we're going to backtrack to how they actually made the money. But the way they got their tapes out. If somebody came in and bought, like, a t-shirt. t-shirt. Or you got a tape. Some, you got a tape. And then they will sell those tapes out, sell those shirts out, and they will do it in person too. Like the players yeah. actually did it in person. Now, do you think? Like that. I guess now we on like the fall of A one. Mm-hmm. Um, no, we're still on the rise because they they were on the pit. They was on top for years. They yeah, sold out the do garden. Left, though. Oh, once the dude left? Once the dude left, that's the fall. Well, the fall was the merchandise fall, but they were still going, people were still going to, like, the games and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, They sold out most, Madison Square. A street ball game sold out Madison Square Garden. Yeah, that was, I, I can only the imagine. The Knicks can't do that now. I can only imagine, like, that feeling. That feeling got to stay with them forever. Be, yeah, man. You played at the Garden, you was on that floor, and you won. The Mecca. The Mecca of basketball. <laughs> you played at the Garden. They started, once they started selling those tickets, I remember going, I went to one. Right around the video game came out because they had like the video game trucks. Madden 04. Madden 04 was out at the time. They had Madden out on the video game trucks. They had that video game out. And then like they had the pickup game outside, mm-hmm. like literally outside the United Center. Yep. And they would go in the back. into United Center and play the actual game. Yep. And they would do I that went to all one. in a day. I went to one. That shit was fun. It was, it like, was. Okay, it was crazy. This is, this is pretty fun time out here, man. That was a dope time, though. That shit was crazy. Um, that was just the rise of it. And then. Yeah, then then um, it's like 
a lot of times it's, it's difficult to look back at things and then like try to block out what I know now about business. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? Because it's like, okay, yeah, they was getting paid, they was traveling the world, but then they was using a likeness, and it's like, bro, damn, how you not get you somebody to get your likeness? You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. They got you a Mountain Dew commercials, but you're not getting the money right. because you signed a contract to N1. So they talk to N1 and use your likeness. Now you got to go shoot this fucking commercial and you're not getting no revenue from it. And it's like, bro, damn, how do you not? But that's what you do. You find impoverished people who are, is just happy to make $70,000, $80,000. Over a span of three months, though. It's kind of impressive. Of work, yeah. $100,000. Yeah. But I'm just saying, compared and- to what you could have been making, because... You was only playing for those couple months, but you were still out doing commercials, out here still doing tour dates, out here on sign uh, press events. You know what I'm saying? So you were, you were still working, just wasn't getting paid for that stuff. And it's also them not reading the contract. Because if you just go by a number, it's like, no, you got to read this whole thing. You should also want this, this, this. I feel like we know that now at our age. You know what I'm saying? Right. And that's why I say well, a lot of times people go for the impoverished people who, again, is just happy to get Sixty, seventy thousand dollars. Not worried about the whole thing. Cause I'm not. What I'm finna get seventy thousand dollars play ball? Hell yeah! I'm gonna fuck what you make on your end. Just give me my cut. And then like, as people get older and wiser, you start asking questions. Yeah. And like, bro, this is my face on this Mountain Dew. How come I'm not getting the check from Mountain Dew? Isn't that? You know, that's when uh, you get to start asking I, questions. To me, I think Professor was the only one who really like understood it. He's like, I don't care how much I get paid. I just know I'm marketable. Yeah. Like he. Okay, he was let me, marketable. Let me he ask was you marketable. this. Let me ask you this. Not because he was white. Are you about to yes, say that? Yes, yes. No. I because don't think I feel like good. I feel like way too many times, this is not all the time, way too many times when white people do a black person's thing average, we give them the highest praise. Hmm. Like, okay, let's, women and twerking, right? Women be twerking, right? And black women be twerking. Just, oh, okay, now nice. she got a big ass. She's shaking it. White girl come twerk. Everybody go, oh, look at the white uh, bitch twerk. Like it's like start footwork. And yeah, underwear. yeah. Okay. It could be a basic footwork, but you just surprised this white dude can do it. No, it was. I mean, no, don't get me wrong. The professor was great, but the they put him. They put that. him through. They put him through the ringer. But does him being white in a black dominated field make him more marketable because Not he's if he white? Busting their ass. Because how come hot sauce wasn't as marketable? I think that at the point he was marketable. I'm just saying, but once the, once they got them the white savior, but how much was Professor getting paid though? I don't know. I'm pretty sure he got paid. And I bet you, Professor, knowing he has white parents or his parents were there, read the contract uh-huh. and said, "I want this, this, and this, and that." Sound like we're privileged to me. I, it, uh. Well, okay, you do that too. <laughs> I'm not gonna try to defend nobody in this, but I'm just saying contracts. No, okay. Contracts say a lot, man. They say a lot. I'm just saying. Do you think that white people get more praise for doing black people things? All the time. Average? We do okay. stand up comedy. Come on now. <laughs> <laughs> Come on now. Anyway, so now now everybody's asking <laughs> questions about their checks, right? Right. Everybody's working hard. I think Bro, I saw hundred thousand. And then they went into uh uh the cruise uh bus. They eating pizza, pizza? and shit. Yeah, they went in there. These corporations they... need to stop giving employees pizza. Thinking that shit okay. <laughs> all jobs, all jobs. Pizza give party. Their employees. Yeah, pizza party. <laughs> I'm not in the eighth grade anymore. I don't want no goddamn pizza. Give me a steak. Give me, like, order me some Portillo's. We should all have different things. That's lunch. I want no damn pizza. The same pizzas everybody has. Yeah, they get pizza. Everybody touching it and shit. They bought them fucking pizza, and then they go in the cruise they bus. They have bushies, man. And they, they have, have filet mignon. <laughs> And stay, they and eat stay good eat on their bus. Great, I'm like, yo, that's <laughs> fucked up. But then, like, I didn't, you know, I didn't, I didn't recognize it was such a divide. I thought it was all like one group. Obviously not. No, no. I'm pretty sure the staff looked down at the athletes. <laughs> these motherfuckers. We making the real money. Up Dude, they was drinking, partying. It's like eh, these niggas look like they smoke weed. Yeah, they, and they, they showed show the rolling they, up. They showed the rolling up. <laughs> they had no grind. They literally broke that shit down. Rolling oh, up, drinking, dudes. smoking, taking girls to the back. They were rock stars. I was like, is this girl's going wild? What is going on? <laughs> and you got to think, who knows if they damaged some shit too on the road? I'm pretty sure the hotels didn't care. All right, probably on the bus, banging on the bus. Oh, yeah. Orgies on the bus, man. Orgies on the N one bus, everybody. That's what happened. The orgies, no orgies on the N one bus. You I'm, hate? Did you say you hate going to orgies? I'm not doing no orgies. Oh, okay. All right. I was about to ask some <laughs> questions. Like, where are you going? 
I had seen a post for Orgy and Schaumburg, but I'll tell you about that later. All um, right. Yeah, that's off camera. We're going to talk about that later. <laughs> All right. They was rock stars, man. Not often athletes get like, like rock stars. Like rock that. star status, yeah. Like I mean, that's because they weren't your typical athlete. No. And, and they, pioneer, they were the pioneers of bringing street ball, the flashiness, everything that an uh, uh, organized coach would tell you not to do. And to the forefront, you know what I'm saying? I think pe- everybody loves the stuff on the fringes of society. Mm-hmm. That's why so many prison shows, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> it's way too many prison shows. Way but pe- people love it because love it's it. not something everybody's going to experience. Right, right, sure. um, and then as soon as the niggas start talking about his check in the locker room, that's when things fall downhill. Because people, like yeah, people like to stunt. Hot Sauce had a car that talked. Why? That's just stupid. That's the dumbest thing is spending money. Why? Why do you need that? Why do you need that? All cars talk now, but it's just GPS. Why do you need a car that talks to you? No, oh, his... and you barely drive. <laughs> I don't know. That was funny. That was that was a big. I wouldn't know how much that money cost. So, do you think they was right or wrong for talking about what they was making? Uh, you're wrong. You should never talk about what you make. I don't even do that at work. I disagree. I disagree I because you should do that, bro. Because if I find out somebody who works right next to me. I'm doing the same job I'm doing every day. Say he's been there just as long as I have. Is making more than me? That's a problem. That's the NBA. That's dip, that contracts are public, so How's you that know you, that you, you, you know what they're making, right? So I should know what my coworkers are making. Okay, but you think people think like that in NBA too? Yes. So you think you don't think they they stun on each other because they got a bigger stun contract? On each other, they all a million is a million. Some well, well, not NBA to some people. Million okay, but, right. But you gotta know. It's, okay, so who, who name a player, and then I'll name a bench player. Probably name a team, then we'll name two players. We we'll just go straight to the Lakers. The Lakers, no different team. Uh, the no, Warriors. The Warriors, different team. That's a different payroll. Uh, uh, the Trailblazers. Okay, different team. You're not gonna compare yourself to Damian Lillard. <laughs> we need ones okay. that uh, don't Timberwolves. pass. Okay, go. Okay. So you think Anthony Edwards? Who is going to get paid? Mm-hmm. And probably the person at the end of the bench. Let's say I don't even know who. They okay. Was on there at the end of the bench, Just looking at Anthony Edwards, probably a vet. You want to go vet, vet minimum? Okay. A vet minimum. You you take the vet minimum so you can stay in the league. You right. not know Anthony Edwards. You can't move like him. You can't mm-hmm. put up points like him. You're okay. Not marketable oh, like stop. him. Stop. You, you've already surpassed what I was saying. What? I was saying somebody put up the same body as work as you. Oh, body. Oh, so you talking about Anthony Edwards, Carl Anthony Towns? Right. Somebody putting up the same body of work as you, you need to be. And the NBA is different, though. Right. So let's to go NBA that I should be, they should be making roughly the same amount. Roughly, not exactly. It's different. You know what I'm saying? But when we come down to our level of doing the same thing, the people on the N1 mixtapes doing the same thing, right? The extra money should have come from endorsements. We know that now. But knowing that somebody who's going out there to perform just as much as you are. Making thirty thousand, and another motherfucker making eighty thousand, and it's like, okay, that's that's a problem, to me in my eyes, okay. right now. But if I know if I'm lesser on the team, I understand that, right? You just got there, right? You just got there, or, or I'm not bringing in as many people. I don't play as much. I understand that, but though the top five guys should have been making roughly the same amount. But here's the yeah, the top five guys would probably make they would probably were, but some of them were jealous at the professor. Because Professor was like in the light a little bit more, but he wasn't making as much money as much money. As he didn't come off as as rough and thuggish as the rest of them. Keep it yeah. a buck. He's white from yeah. Oregon. Well, and also if you're not, it's a look too for TV. You gotta think about. He that. had the look. He's white. Anyway, we're close to thirty minutes. You keep saying he's white. It's a certain look for TV you need to have. We're at thirty minutes. At that, ti- at that time, at that time, at that time. No, stop cutting me off because you're trying to. Make it, at that time, I don't know. As I'm not defending the white guy, but at that time, he had a remarkable. I would actually cut no, his hair, bro. A hundred percent, bro. Yes, I I agree with you. I'm not disagreeing with you. Okay. I'm also just on the fact that he was white. <laughs> uh, <laughs> <laughs> he was the only white guy too. The only one. So. Anyway, what do you rate? It's just like being at the Gap, being the only black person. You up front. Kanye said that. Okay. Let some black person walk in. I bet you they show off they token blackie. All right. What I rate the documentary? I get that a five. You give that a five. I'm playing. 4.9. <laughs> I'm playing. Because at the end, it was kind of predictable. I was like, I think it was money who fucked this up. 
Yeah, watch the fight. Yeah, was... Oh, we forgot to talk about when he threw that hot pizza on one of the people. Oh, <laughs> oh. and then he said, she come to me, I'm going to slap her, I'm going to slap the shit out that girl. He was he for real. About, he was for real. He was for real. I forgot who that he was. He was going to slap the shit out of her. He was, I forgot which one, which person that was. Crazy. A um, hot ass pizza. I rated 4.2. Okay. All right. Because, like I said in the beginning, I wish they'd have dove into the players more. Um, but I understand it was a doc about M1 and not the players. Because since they're not a contract, you, they probably, you know, I have to pay them individually or whatever. I'm pretty sure they did that anyway, but I don't know. I wish they'd have got more into the lore of and one and less into the business. Because as at the, even at the height of and one, people was not, I really didn't see too many people rocking and one. Yeah. T shirts, shorts, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Oh. Um, I got a pair and one shorts. I still play basketball, right? Right, because they sell them at Walmart. Um, but not the shoes. What you trying to say? That it's still around. You can still get it. Yeah, they were last minute shorts. That's that's all I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> but the white people were smart. <laughs> the, the, the guys that started, they realized it was over with. Let's sail. <laughs> <laughs> they saw that shit fast as hell. Man, they showed it fast as fuck. <laughs> they didn't even the tell them. Bro, they said no notice? <laughs> uh, yeah, I know we're supposed to be a new contract, but that's it. All right, guys. <laughs> No, no, there's no, no, it's just, we done. We're done. We're done. Um, but yeah. Yeah, 4.2. Well, we could talk about this, actually, for a long time. I could oh, talk about one basketball for a minute. But tell me who was y'all favorite and one person, except hot sauce. Don't name hot sauce. Yes. No, no hot sauce, no professor. Who was your favorite basket? Who was your favorite and one player? It's a bunch of them. Too. Escalade. Escalade. Because he fat. That man had handles. He did. He did. Mine is A.O., <laughs> Because he had the most disrespectful move. <laughs> he was sit, sits, and can dribble, and I was just a fan of that. Like, yeah. yeah, not everybody sits, sits, can dribble like that. He was just. The Escalade made that cool. ball look and small. He was the first real name I learned, too. Who, AO? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Because it's just his initials. All right. Um, <laughs> As always, I'm Alan Ford. Follow me at Ford of Comedy on Facebook and Instagram and TikTok. Make sure uh, y'all follow me too. This is Will Hill. Find me on all social medias. Simply just Will. And we out. Yeah. It's on a beat, make it boom.